We're back with another Bill Biology, and today's guest, you've probably seen one of his creations over the last six plus years. So let's go check out what special project he brought today. What's up, Mike? How's it going? Appreciate nice. you guys having me. No, oh, thanks for coming. First, let's talk about what did you bring? Uh, this is my 31 Ford Model A pickup truck, or at least what's left of it. Yeah, I was gonna say, it doesn't look too much left of it, but I mean, there's a couple things, but yeah. Let's get, uh, let's totally get into the, the nitty gritty, the kibbles and bits. Let's do it. Yeah, honestly, as far as what's left of it, it's really the only thing original is the cab and the nose panel, I guess. Everything else is, is custom built from the ground up, but it makes for a 31. It's titled as a 31. I call it one. It's good yeah. enough for me. It looks like you chopped it a little bit. Yeah, so the only thing that I did to the cab myself was a three inch chop to the top. Who knows how many decades ago somebody put a tin top on it. But otherwise I left the cab exactly how I found it. It was kind of important to me to leave it exactly as it was. And it kind of worked out because I really wanted a gray truck. That's what I envisioned in my head. Got the pop out windshield, which is a really cool detail. Yeah, retained that when we chopped the top. Wanted to make sure that that still worked. It still has like roll up functioning windows, still seals up for the most part. You know, it still works. It's a, it's a drivable vehicle. I wanted something that I could hop into, take around when I wanted to. It's certainly not practical, but it's drivable at best. It, it was really important to keep that factor to it. Let's talk about another piece that's original still, your grill shell. Yeah, the grill shell uh -huh. and then like the front eight inches of the hood are original. Uh, the grill itself is not. It's actually a louvered setup that I built. You know, I kind of wanted something that could give it a solid nose, but then could also open up and behind it is the headlight assembly and the heat exchanger for the blower. That's pretty wild, I'm not gonna lie. Weight was somewhat of a focus for the build, not the key focus. It's not the lightest thing, but it does come in at 2,270 pounds, so it's, it's pretty light for what it is. Yeah, so what is your overall theme? I know you wanted something drivable, it definitely stops people, it snaps necks. It's not a typical traditional hot rod. Yeah, right yeah. So Overall what... theme, honestly, was just to build something that is a hot rod no one's seen before. You know, there's been a million and one hot rods built. I figured I'd try to build something that wasn't quite like any others. Kind of wound up building what I call a, I guess a race truck. I mean, it's, it's not built to competitively do anything, but lots of, you know, road racing inspired bits and pieces, some trophy truck inspiration at the back end. And then of course, it's got to have some hot rod flavor to it too. Yeah, this definitely looks like trophy truck inspired. Yeah, it was kind of a, a long time goal to build something that kind of had inspiration and design elements from trophy trucks and stadium trucks and things like that. From the get go, I knew I wanted to build a you know bell crank push rod suspension setup and i knew i wanted to mount the coilovers up high uh, kind of have them you know in your face and to create a suspension setup that taught me something while i was building it too kind of figuring out the you know dynamics of it to make it work and function properly was you know half the fun of the build you built this all with your two mitts right there yep these guys right here built solely at our garage that's wild dude so you have a heat exchanger up front this is your radiator get your fans back here Exactly. So there is an electric water pump that runs water, obviously, from the motor to the back. Now, I was kind of worried I might have some airflow troubles. I kind of guessed maybe I'd need to put some big venting on the sides to kind of catch air and, yeah, and funnel it in. Around, uh, but, but no. you know, cruising down the road, even sitting in traffic, everything, it usually hovers right around at like 180 degrees. It, it's perfect. It's been wonderful. Yeah, it looks like the frame is uh, it's just rectangular, right? The whole yeah, thing? so the base chassis itself is two by three, 120 wall tubing, uh, just a pretty typical, you know, like double Z frame. And and then the kind of the cage structure on the back half of it is one and three quarter, 120 wall. I kind of give it some structure, some stability. It's trussed underneath. It's a real stiff frame given what it is. Doesn't have any flex, which is which is pretty nice. It keeps it driving like a go-kart because honestly, that's pretty much what it is. So we got here for a fuel setup. It's four fuel pumps. So the truck's running on E85. Uh, it's certainly overfueled, but you know, I wanted room to grow, not have to come back and refine it. So it's got two lift pumps and then two inline high pressure pumps and a one and a half liter surge tank. And then tucked behind the radiator is also coolers for the uh, transmission and for the engine oil, so. And what's this finish? Is it paint or is it? Yeah, like it's, car, believe it or paint? not, the whole chassis is spray painted. I'm gonna go, that's the most amazing spray paint I've ever seen in my life. Well, let's just talk about your wheels real quick because yeah. those are definitely unique. You're not gonna see them on anything else. Yeah, the Guaranteed. only other place you're going to catch them is on uh, Mazda's current DPI, like Le Mans prototype car. That's what they're off of. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of the car. So we made custom center lock hubs and then mounted them up. They're 18 by 12 and a half and 18 by 13. And then I'm running uh, Michelin P2L rain slicks, mostly just for the attitude of it. They look totally sick. And it's square setup. 
No, not. That's not it's slightly so. slimmer in the front, which is humorous. Everyone always asks, is the front of the truck wider than the rear? It's not. The track width is square, and then the front's wheels are slightly slimmer, half inch slimmer. So let's just get to uh, the fun part. This build, you actually went with, I mean, granted, it's a late model, but it still is, it is. of brand. Yeah, I really wanted to keep the truck as much Ford as I could. I wanted it to be a Ford, not really a mashup of different vehicles. Uh, so I actually bought pretty much the entirety of a wrecked 2011 Mustang GT. But yeah, the Coyote's been an awesome platform. I've wanted to use it for a long time. I think it's pretty cool for an overhead cam V8. And then with the VMP blower and the technology these guys are, are putting into these things, the power output is absolutely mental. You know, the price per pony is nuts. How much boost is on this and how this, much does it make? This right now is running, uh, the pulley's rated it's like 12 to 14 PSI, which obviously is a little bit of a range. We haven't had it on the dyno yet with the latest exhaust and tuning and whatnot. We're expecting 800 at the wheels. So, so your butt dyno says 800. Yeah. And since it only weighs like a little bit over 2,000 pounds, yeah, it's, it's going to be It's right at 1,000 kilograms, and it's, it's a rocket ship. It's terrifying to drive. This exhaust setup is bananas. We built these basically to kind of build something totally nuts, uh, kind of show off, build something crazy, something that sounds good obviously wickedly loud and as a final portion of that is to get a o2 sensor after the collector we'll have to wait to see it underneath because it looks like it goes yeah under so this bank across. is actually out on that side and vice versa oh yeah you're right i just yeah it does go across that's crazy that's a whole bunch of spaghetti going on right there it's amazing though well let's go check out your office <laughs> It is cozy in here. It is cramped. Uh, it is not for uh, anyone bigger <laughs> than me, realistically, but it's not too bad. It's relatively comfortable for what it is. It's got enough room to be in. Uh, my first hot rod that I built, I made the mistake of making the inside just way too small, too uncomfortable. So I really kind of wanted to improve on that this time around while also, you know, keeping the package small. I wanted, you know, the engine to be up against the firewall so that eats up a ton of room inside and, and things like that, but it's a good balance. Oh, okay, yeah. You got the bare necessities in here. I mean, you have Kirkies. Oh, this is actually kind of nice. Yeah, they've got some foam in them. It's, yeah. it's not too bad to sit in. You got all the switches up in here. You got your master battery kill. That is a unique looking shifter. Oh, so is it Ring Brothers? Yeah. It is. But what's cool is like, man, your seating, like the foot pedals. <laughs> yeah, you got to have small shoes on uh, and, you know, be careful with your foot placement. It'd be pretty easy to mash the throttle instead of the brake. Oh, uh, wow. But it fits. It's, it's really not too bad. You have glass in it? It's tinted glass as opposed yeah. to window tint on the glass. That's what came in the doors of the truck when I bought it. And this tunnel is massive. The transmission in the truck is a Jericho WC44, so a four-speed dog box. Straight um, cut? Straight cut and obviously had to have room for, you know, all the, you know, shift linkages on the side of the transmission. Honestly, the biggest reason I went with that transmission, though, is although it's a sweet transmission that can hold a ton of power and it's fun to drive, I needed the room and the six speed that came with the Mustang. It ate up even more room than that did. It made it impossible to fit pedals in the truck. So it was the first thing to go. And then uh, obviously just all, you know, hand riveted aluminum and whatnot. I'm not eager to drill any more holes or any more rivets anytime soon. <laughs> How many hours do you have in this? The truck itself took me five and a half months start to finish. What? Yep. Uh, and that was working only after hours. So kind of after work up until maybe like the last week, I kind of really put in, you know, a whole weeks of time. Other than that, yeah, just kind of after hours, you know, if you know what you want, you know what you're going for, you get it done. Man. All right. Well, I think it's time to talk about the underneath. So we should probably get up on the lift. Let's throw it up. <laughs> For the front suspension, um, I went with a double A-arm setup. I wanted something that would handle really well. I wanted something that I could kind of utilize the H&R coilovers with and, you know, really put them to the test. They were the big partner with this build, and when I told them what I wanted to do, they were quick to jump on it and say, yeah, let's bring that to life. Adjustable coilovers all the way around. It's got rack and pinion steering. You know, I threw away all the old antiquated stuff. What? <laughs> Got to get rid of it. It's not going to work. Used the 2011 Mustang spindles, but if you kind of look closely at them, they're heavily modified instead of being McPherson now. They're, uh, you know, as I said, double A-arm. It's got the big brakes, all adjustable bits and pieces. It's all heim jointed so we can, you know, align it, get it exactly where we want it to be. The geometry itself is all uh, my own design, so, you know, busted out the calculator and the spreadsheet and 
all that kind of stuff and penned out exactly where I wanted like, you know, the camber curves, caster curves, you know, instant center, roll center, all that kind of stuff. How did you get this rack in here? That's definitely one of the hurdles with such a small vehicle. I think a lot of people, when they see photos of it or video of it, they don't realize just how tiny it is. It's a really small car. Yeah. So to fit everything in here, especially the rack and pinion, was probably the biggest challenge of the whole build, to have, you know, kind of the steering column chase all the way up into the car, to dodge the pedals, to fit through the dash, things like that. It is a Woodward quick ratio steering rack and otherwise pretty simple parts. It yeah. is manual. There's no power steering. It takes a little bit of effort to turn these, but yeah. once yeah. you're moving, it's not bad. Your forearms and, are yeah. Popeye, what? I'm not a big on? guy, so <laughs> it, fortunately for me, it's a workout. That's wild. So you get to see the exhaust now that uh, Riley put together, and yeah, you can really tell. From the top, honestly, I would have to look out longer to realize it was crossing over. Yeah, it, it's something not a lot of people realize immediately. As said, it kind of gave us the opportunity to add some length after the collectors. Gives us uh, you know better O2 reading than we had initially, and it sounds bitchin'. It's sweet. It's loud as hell. All right, let's continue on your rear suspension then. You were talking about this when we were up, up on top. How does this actually work? At its core, it's actually a really simple triangulated four-link. Uh -huh. uh, so it's not anything out of the ordinary of what you'd find in a normal car. It's just instead of having the coilovers, you know, based low, there's push rods and bell cranks and they're actuated up high. So it's really not too complicated in the back versus the front. So you can actually adjust the ride height by adjusting the lengths of the push rods. You can, mm -hmm. you know, help corner balance that way. And then alignment is through the triangulated four link bars. If it's a vehicle that's just meant to blow tires up and go wicked fast, why not just keep it simple, keep it bulletproof and, and put, you know, a, a nine inch in it. So that's what it's got. It's got a posi rear end in it. And, what gears uh, you got? In 350 it? gears. Okay. So, so it's it's paired well since it's a four speed, but the tires are like 28 and change. It drives fine going down the freeway, but it's still got a uh, you know plenty of kick to it. It's a pretty traditional rear end, just with some added flavor to it. You know, like I said, I'd love to see what it'll do both in a straight line and around a circuit. It's it's not built to go in a straight line, but I know it'll go fast, and that's what's you know that's what's fun. Well, we dig it. We dig it. Well, dude, thanks for bringing it by. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. I'm, uh, I'm glad you guys wanted to check it out. Yeah, and then for sure, bring it to the burn yard. Let's do it. Just saying. I remember seeing this at SEMA. I'm like, this is like interior, like this is like an interior component for a house like in Palm Springs. Exactly. Exactly, exactly what so it like is. <laughs>